What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a new Ryzen powered single board computer that'll be hitting the market in the next month or so from a company out of China called Zetron. Or in other parts of the world, I guess it would be pronounced Zedtron. And they reached out to me a few weeks ago and asked me if I'd like to take a look at their new board. They're shooting for a price range from 200 to 250, but it's probably going to be on the higher end. It's going to come as a bare bones board and they are calling it a single board computer. But after getting this in my possession and checking it out for a little while, this definitely looks like a motherboard for a very small PC, something along the lines of like an AMD powered NUC. Something from ASRock, ASUS, I think Zotac makes a couple of these smaller PCs. And we actually saw this a few months back. There were eBay sellers selling something very similar, but it was powered by an Intel CPU. It's actually the Tiger Lake CPU. An 1135G7, and I believe there were some with the 1165G7s. But we've yet to see an AMD version, and I'm actually super excited to test this out. This will come as a bare bones unit. You'll have to add your own storage and RAM. It supports one M.2 SSD and dual channel DDR4 up to 3200 megahertz. For this here, I've just added 16 gigabytes of RAM running in dual channel and a 512 gigabyte Kingston M.2 SSD. This supports Linux and Windows. I'm going to be running Windows 10 Pro on this unit, and it doesn't come with a stand, at least the prototype that I have right now. So I've just grabbed some little brass standoffs and some screws so I can kind of keep this up off of the table. And to tell you the truth, if they were to design a case for this and kind of sell it inside of a case, it really wouldn't be much different from some of the 5000 series Ryzen mini PCs that we take a look at. As you can see, it's not much bigger than a Raspberry Pi 4. And as for I.O., we get a full size HDMI port, two USB type C ports, and they do support display out. Unfortunately, we can't power this board over USB type C. We also get three USB 3.0 ports and our power input. And by the way, this does come with a 65 watt power supply. So after messing around with this board for a little while, I've come to the conclusion that this was basically just a board that was supposed to go in a mini PC. I mean, I'm pretty sure of it. We're basically just getting the industrial version, but to tell you the truth, if they could keep the price on this down to around $200, it would probably be worth it to a lot of people to pick this up. Actually got a lot going on for this tiny board. Right now, as making the video, it's known as the Zetron 5500U. For the CPU, we have the Ryzen 5500U. It's still based on Zen 2, but we have 6 cores, 12 threads, with a base clock of 2.1 GHz and a boost up to 4.0. I've actually tested a few laptops with this little chip, and I'm a huge fan of it as long as we can get that TDP up. It's got built-in Radeon 7 graphics at 1800 MHz. It'll support up to 64 GB of DDR4 running at 3200 MHz. For this video, we're going with 16 gigabytes. It also supports up to a one terabyte M.2 SSD. And since it's powered by an x86 CPU, we can run Windows on this or Linux. And there's tons of other operating systems that'll work on this, either from the internal storage or over USB. Okay, so we should be booting up here in a second. I've got everything updated. I've installed some emulators and games that we're gonna be testing, but uh, I just wanted to show you a few things before we jump right into the testing because I have noticed something about the TDP on this little system. Now, out of the box, it's about 15 watts, but uh, it's kind of a 15 watt shared between the GPU and the CPU portion of the APU. I'm not exactly sure how they have this set up, but on most of these, you know, 4500U up to the 5500U chips in something like a Lenovo laptop, we can get around 30 watts using a third party application just out of the CPU side. It's really not shared between. But on this little board, it seems that's the way they have it set up, and hopefully this can be fixed with a BIOS update. But uh, as you can see, we've got that 5500U, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and the Radeon 7 graphics. Overall, the way it's running right now, at 15 watts out of the box, it's a very snappy experience. Using this for video playback, web browsing, everything loads up nice and quick. And I kind of expected it to be a nice little experience here, especially for email checking, web browsing, and even video playback. But we are going to test out some 4K playback from YouTube in just a second. But as you can see, using this as an everyday desktop, you should definitely be good to go at 15 watts. But I always like to see how far we can push these little APUs. And unfortunately, the way this is set up right now, there's not much more we can do. So I've got Prime95 running. We've got our wattage on screen. And the CPU by itself, when it's maxed out, won't reach 15 watts. Now, if I throw some GPU at it, we can bring this totally up to about 15 to 16 watts. Or if I use something like the APU tuning utility and bring it up to 25 watts, you can see that our CPU is still sitting at that same wattage. But if I run a GPU render test at the same time, 
The total TDP of this APU jumps up to around 25. So we're a little locked here, and this 5500U can definitely put out more performance than we're getting, but it's kind of locked at that 25 watt threshold. I've tried absolutely everything, and there's no way to set it from the BIOS. So until something comes along, this is about the maximum performance we're going to get out of this machine. So the first thing I wanted to show off was a little bit of 4K video playback from YouTube, and this little thing does a great job. Got Big Buck Bunny running here. This is a 4K 60 video. Stats for Nerds is on screen. I know it's a bit hard to see. But by the end of this video here, even with skipping around, I only had a total of 23 drop frames, which is something you would never notice unless you had kind of a frame counter on screen like we do with Stats for Nerds right now. So yeah, 4K video playback is good to go, be it uh, streaming from your favorite app, YouTube, Netflix, HBO, or even native playback. It works just fine with this little chip. I also ran a few benchmarks, and the first one here is Geekbench 5. We got a 1,119 on the single core and a 3,742 on the multi. We could definitely do better if we could get that TDP up, but this is what it's sitting at right now. Next up, we have 3D Mark Wildlife. This tests the Vulcan performance of that built-in Radeon 7 GPU, 6,028. And the final one I ran was 3D Mark Night Raid. Total score, 10,416. Definitely not top-of-the-line scores, and even for the 5500U, these are all looking on the lower end compared to what I've tested before in Dell and Lenovo laptops with this same chip. But I still want to see how this handles gaming and emulation. So the first game I tested here was The Art of Rally. Not a super high-end game, but I still think it's a very beautiful game. So been playing this a lot lately. And going into it, I just went to low settings. We're getting an average of 110 FPS. So we can definitely take this up a bit if you just want to run it at 60. Next one I wanted to test was the original Skyrim, and I really thought we were going to get better performance out of this. I'm at medium settings, 900p, and I'm only getting an average of around 55 FPS. I know it's really close to 60, but I know for a fact that when the 5500U is running at 30 watts, it can run this at 60 all day. 900p, medium settings, should be no problem. If we look at Afterburner, you'll see that our GPU clocks are dropping way down with this, and that's where that lower TDP is hurting us with this little board. We just can't get enough power to the GPU and CPU side of things. I also wanted to test at least one fighting game. Here we have Injustice 2, and this was actually pretty impressive. We're at low, 720p, and we're so close to 60. Now when you take this game compared to Skyrim, it's using a lot less CPU. We're only about 15%, where Skyrim was around 32 to 35. So it can get that power to the GPU. You see we're now at 1800 MHz. So it's going to be a little hit or miss, and it's a bit all over the place, but the final game I wanted to test was really impressive, and that's Forza Horizon 5. This is a very well optimized game, love testing this out on lower end APUs. Right now we're at 720p low settings with resolution scale set to quality, and right now it's actually doing a way better job than I thought it would, but we are kind of overrunning that CPU and GPU. So I'm going to go into settings here, and I'm just going to turn it to 60fps, we'll turn VSync on. Keeping the same settings, low 720p with uh, resolution scale set to quality, and we're so close to getting a steady 60 out of it. If I could throw some more wattage at this APU, I guarantee we could get a steady 60 out of it. Turning our attention to some emulation, first up we have PSP using PPSSPP, 4X resolution, Vulcan back in, Midnight Club 3 dub edition, running at full speed. This just happens to be a harder game to emulate, and at 4X we're good to go. I think I could probably go up a bit higher, but I just started at 4X and it looked great. Moving over to PS2 using PCSX2, 1080p, DirectX 11, really great performance here. Now there was one game that I tested which was Soul Calibur 3. I couldn't quite do it at 1080p, but at 720 it ran at 60. And finally, GameCube using the Dolphin emulator, 1080p, Vulcan back in, one of the harder ones to emulate on lower end chips, F-Zero GX on one of the harder tracks to run, 
we're good to go with this. Now I did see a few dips here and there, but again, we're using that Vulcan back in, and when it comes to these AMD chips and Dolphin, I've always had better luck with DirectX 11. As for power consumption, at idle, we're around 7 watts. While gaming, pulled around 31 watts on average, and the maximum that I could get this to pull from the wall, this is total system power consumption, not just on the CPU, was 46 watts. So it's a relatively low power consumption board, but keep in mind, I mean, I'm basically in performance mode here. I'm trying to get the most out of this thing that we can. I really do hope we see this come to market at that lower price tag. I'd say $199 would be really great on this board, and the way it's set up right now, it's an awesome performer for its form factor. But there's still more that we can get out of this 5500U with a BIOS update. If I'm able to take this up to 30 watts or 35 watts, we will get much better performance in gaming with it. It's going to pull more power, it'll get a bit hotter, but I think it'll be worth it in the end. And if I'm able to get a BIOS update from the manufacturer that allows me to tweak that TDP, I will make another video. But I'd actually like to know your thoughts on this little board. Would you be willing to pick one of these up at that $199 price tag, or would you just kind of skip it altogether? Let me know in the comments below. I'm going to keep everybody updated in my community tab on the final price, release date, and if I'm able to get a BIOS or not. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.